What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? My name is Brad Gilmore, but you might know me by another name. You might know me as the commissioner for the First Class League. What is the First Class League? It is the very first developmental league in Movie Trivia Schmodown history. You're going to get to see the future stars, the future champions, the future Hall of Famers, the future faces on the Rushmore of the Movie Trivia Schmodown before they even get drafted. Every single Tuesday, two matches on the Movie Trivia Schmodown Twitch channel. Oh, and did I mention we are going to be live on the Movie Trivia Schmodown Twitch channel. And then two weeks later, you can check out the FCL matches on Schmodown Extra. You do not want to miss out. You do not want to get shut out because the FCL is going to be all first class. Hello, everybody in Movie Trivia Schmodown Universe. This is such an amazing, amazing season. So here is why it is so important for Patreon. Patreon is the lifeblood of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. It has been for a very long time. We are doing three pay-per-views versus, and that will be one match, one big match, the throwdown, also two big matches inside of the throwdown, and then at the end of the month, Battlefield. So that's five big pay-per-view matches, and guess what? If you are at the $10 level, you get all three of them. You're also going to get one commentary match a month. So let's say that uh, Rachel Cushing and Mike Kalinowski decide they're going to watch their San Diego Comic-Con match together and they're going to comment on it. You guys will get that at the $10 tier it up. $20 and up. We are doing special Q&As with certain patrons. So Dan Merle just won a match. Well, if you're the $20 patron, the link will be sent out. You can join the stream and ask question right after his match. And this, I didn't even mention the exhibition. You get an exhibition match also. Exhibition that'll happen once a month that you guys will get. Patreon.com slash Schmodown. Join today. It's all going to be worth it, but we thank you. We thank you for your support and everything that you have done. Now, go enjoy the match. Enjoy the program. Whatever you're watching on SEN, enjoy it, and we'll see you next time. Hey, what's going on, champ? Hey, what's up, man? You know, I Dan, I just wanted to let you know that that match with Snyder, really, really good stuff. Uh, you handled your business, you know, you took care of it, which on this faction, that's all we can do. I appreciate that. So I, I know now all attention moves towards the Finstock exchange. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I know I was, I was all business last week, had to get this match out of the way, but you know, we are here for a common purpose. I agree. Yep. We should move on to the exchange. And I, I actually, I had a, I had a couple ideas. I, I'll what? Yeah. What do you got? What's the plan? Okay. I, I, I know how this sounds, but. I want a prank called Gucci. I got an idea. If you're up for it, you want you want two grown men to prank call Bobby Gucci in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What's the plan? They're not, they're not going to, okay, here's the, they're not going to know that he's not going to see this coming. Okay. So, you know, he keeps his computer open like all the time. I got all his info. So I, I know there's this, there's this one way I know we're really going to get to him. And he doesn't know my number. I never gave him my real number. So he doesn't know my yeah. number. He's not going to know it's me calling. I, I just roll with me here. I got an idea and, uh, and I, it's definitely going to take him away from whatever strategy or whatever else he's doing. Let's just send him on a wild goose chase, right? Let's have okay. a little yeah. fun. All right, all right. I'm gonna call him. Who are you gonna be? I mean, who are you just gonna? Oh, just, just wait. Voice? Just wait. Okay. I got it. I got some good stuff right. coming here. This is what happens when you don't show up to manage me. <laughs> Bitcoin, Bobby. Identify yourself. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Is this Bobby Gucci? Yeah. Who's this? Uh, this is Gene. Gene, uh, your uh, parole officer. I thought we weren't uh, supposed to talk till next Thursday. Yeah, no, uh, no, that's uh, we, we got. We're supposed to be meeting right now. We got uh, the, something. Uh, I don't know if you got your schedule wrong or something, but yeah, I'm I'm here waiting on you, and uh, and you're not here. What what's going on? You you, you know, I'm gonna have to write this up as a missed check-in. What do you mean? Uh, 
well, I mean, come on. I mean, gee, I was, I was, I was at dinner with Mesero. You know, you sound a little different. What's, what's, what's going on? Oh, I got a cold. Here, here's the thing. Uh, I'm, I'm uh -huh. here. I'm at the Griffith Observatory, and uh, I listen. I, you got, if you're not here in uh, 45 minutes, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to, re to mark this down as a no-show, and uh, you might be heading uh, back back to the pen. How am I gonna sit there in 45 for 45 minutes? I mean, I, I'm, I'm all the way across town. I'm in Santa Monica. I got walkies on sets over here. I got the rock over here. I, I, I got dinner with Mesero later. I mean, I, I can't break those plans like that. I right, listen. I mean, it was a white, it was a white collar thing that I did. And, and, you know, I don't deserve that. I don't care what color your collar is. I've got you down 43 minutes now. You're going to have to tell The Rock, sorry, maybe he can helicopter you over here. You know, Gene, you know what? Okay. All right. You know what? All right. I'll meet you. Okay. I, well, no, get, you better get here now. 42 minutes and ticking. Fine. I'll put ludicrous speed on the Tesla. I'll get there. Do it. All right. See you soon. <laughs> Oh, that moron's gonna go down to across town and rush her. Oh, oh boy. That's uh, good. Ah, uh, Dan, I didn't think you had it in you. Listen. Oh my god. You never know what you're capable of until you've experienced the ultimate betrayal. That clown's gonna drive all the way across Los Angeles. I don't know. I don't know what we're, I don't know what he's gonna do when he gets there. Maybe we just leave something for him. I don't know, but uh Oh. Dan, first blood has been struck against those idiots in the exchange. Scorched earth. Good. Burn that it all to good. the ground. That was brilliant, brilliant stuff. We got to add that to the playbook. Oh, get ready. Uh. This is just the beginning. They're going to rue the day. <laughs>to the movie trivia schmodown what a month of matches it has been we've had three pay-per-views we got another pay-per-view tonight but this match man what a match it is and it is the last match of the month before we get to our big pay-per-view tonight obviously and it is between corruption last year's champions that's right james the jet white with a new moniker this season as he goes up against the powder keg paul preston of the den man this is gonna be this match mark this you're gonna see fireworks you, if you've been paying attention to twitter if you've been paying attention to the facebook group shannon obviously and kate have been going at it uh, the jet and, and the powder keg have been going after one another this has been a lot of build-up to this match and i didn't know how much how badly i actually wanted to see it until i see how much bad blood there is Oh, I woke up thinking about this match. Yeah, we got the big one later, but this one, I mean, you talk about having fireworks. I'm not sure if we're going to get explosions, but we're at least going to get a lot of protein powder strewn across the screen and maybe an Orioles hat in there somewhere because Paul Preston and James White, Christian, they're respected competitors in the movie trivia Schmodown. No one is going to deny them that after their previous performances, but they're not satisfied with respect. They want to accumulate enough wins. They're looking at themselves as number one contender, possibly championship material in singles, and they're here to prove it and get their season started off on the right foot. Well, they're both in similar situations. When you look at uh, Paul Preston had a very, when he, when he came into the league, he came out with Adam Witt, and there was some hype behind them. He debuted in the free for all, but then he had a couple of teams matches and he got so close, couldn't get it done. And then he went on this good run in singles and it's like oh man this guy is going to be uh, he's he's could, could be one of the next big superstars and he had some misses just some misses and last year him and tom are supposed to be this big crazy team and it just didn't happen so he's been on that i'm almost there i'm almost there and couldn't get over the hump and james white is in a similar situation james white was the number two pick pick overall by uh, Robert Meyer Burnett last year with the with the uh, the burning droogs and he was a rookie that put a lot of pressure on him that put a lot of pressure on him so so now so now the fact that he's in this league in the second software and he, and he went late 
to corruption. You know, he and he was on the den last year after being traded. He's he's had a for a kid who's only been in the league two seasons. He's got a lot of mileage already. He's been to a lot of places, packed his bags, had to stay in a lot of hotels, take a train from one faction to the other. But from what we've seen in his social media presence in the promo that I'm sure we're about to witness thanks to the great nerd chronic is that he feels like he's found a home but Christian you know better than anybody you can feel like your home in the movie trivia schmodown but you have to earn your keep you got to do your chores and in the case of corruption that means you got to get some W's it's absolutely right and as we have seen and as I have told you you have seen the talk you have seen the fireworks the past season well, with Kate Mulligan and her brand new start and her brand new attitude going up against the same old Shannon Barney, we're going to see some fireworks, and here's how it all is going to go down. What's up, Schmodown? Powder Cake here. You're probably asking yourself, hey, what's a powder cake been doing during the off season? Well, look, I'm no dummy. Loyalty is something we need, and I'm going to find it with one person who I know has already gotten my back for a whole year, and that's Kate Mulligan. I wore this dress, my lucky dress for the draft, and um, it fits me exactly the same. <laughs> Don't worry about that, guys. Gotcha, sucker. Uh, sorry, I was just um, finishing up an email to Sharon Barney Fife, great manager. I just was apologizing that I had to, uh, I had to steal the draft from her in the way that I did. Well, it's late in the draft, the board's depleting, and corruption is up. What on earth will they do? <gasps> Oh my god, Shannon drafts James the Wizard White, and how could you allow her to get such a late steal? Losing to a former champ of his caliber by two points, I can't be ashamed. I could have beaten Bibiani that match, but I made two rookie mistakes, and Bibiani is Bibiani, and he didn't make any mistakes, and he won that match, but I'm not a rookie anymore. It's a new year, and it's a new me. I couldn't have asked for a better landing spot than with the reigning and defending champions of corruption with the best manager in this league, Shannon Barney. And Paul, pressure's all kind of on you here because James wasn't even a televised draft pick, whereas you are a retained player, so you have to win. Paul Preston, AKA my ride or die. You can say what you will about his last season, but I would not say anything about this season yet. But I can't go back in time. I can't pull this somewhere in time, go sweat in a hotel room and die. So watch your ass. Here's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's right. I have mainlined about 400,000 hours of movies straight into my veins. The only thing I ever learned in the den is that Paul's favorite protein powder is surprisingly strawberry. So this is another way to do it. Kate and I have been talking about this. It's a great way to get everything done. You don't want to miss anything, all right? So every meal's important. Get your protein, kids. And yeah, I ended up losing in a match that if I had corruption and Shannon in my corner, I win. And and being around all these amazing competitors in my faction, it's it's just gonna light a fire under me. Now I think you're gonna see a much more confident, more well-rounded James White than you've seen last season. And now we can reintroduce to all of you the Jets. The JV synchronized swim team captain over there, he lost to an IG competitor. I'm not messing around anymore. I've studied it all, film and video. And this, I gotta go now because this is the final chapter. Protein powder, Entertainment Weekly's guide to the greatest movies ever made. Whip that up in a blender, and it's enema time, baby. Paul, oh, maybe it's time to ditch the protein powder for something a little bit more up your speed. Oh yes, I have been corrupted. Damn, it feels good. It's weird because it almost seems like there's some respect coming from Shannon, kind of, because she likes that that great that uh, Kate dumped Grace. 
I like that. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that now, but but still, uh, the fact that that happened and that's happened in the past. But I think Shannon is taking credit for Kate's new personality and Kate's basically telling her to go scratch her rear end, if if you know what I mean. So I, I don't know. It's it's yeah. it's interesting. It's a it's a cool dynamic. But then you see how determined Paul and James are. Anything goes. Yeah, Kate has this weird accent now that I don't really understand. But Shannon, you know that she's going to have a lot of smack to talk to any faction manager, particularly a Kate Mulligan. And sometimes that smack is just belittling them in terms of taking credit for everything that they have done well. But you know she's not overlooking anyone. Shannon is too good of a manager to say, oh, we're just going to roll over that. She may say those things. She knows how to train someone. But for Mulligan, I'll give her credit. I think Preston is a, a nice member of the den in terms of production. And I think that we're going to see a lot of correct answers from him today. Will it be enough for him? Is he a Yankee fan? They're all Yankee fans, but not James White. He's an Orioles fan. He's looking to scrap together a W here today. All right. Well, we're about to get going here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Three rounds in the singles division. Introducing first. Representing Corruption with a record of one win, one defeat. This is James the Janet White. All right, James White has arrived. Now, James, you've gone through a diff a really interesting journey, my man. If you look at the the Droogs to the Den, now to Corruption. Bouncing back and forth from three factions in a matter of a year, does that have an effect on your psyche at all at a player, or you just do what you got to do? Uh, no, the only thing that, that I'm worried about right now is that I have the best manager in the league that has my back. I landed in a perfect position here with Shannon and Corruption. I mean, I'm, I'm with a chance. I've, I've got everybody in my faction that knows what they're doing and knows how to win. So I am just soaking in every bit of information I can from the singles champ, Adam Collins, from Chance Ellison, who's a champion, and Kalinowski, and Marisol, and Dewberry, and everybody. Look, I mean, when I got drafted by Burnett, it was a joke. You know, nothing happened there. And then I get kicked over to the den. You know, they uh, they, they did nothing for me. I, I, I did everything I could to help that faction out, and I got nothing out of it. So now I'm finally with a bunch of people that have each other's back. I got the best manager in the league with my back. So I'm ready to do this. James, with the Den, you did get a one and one record. So that's 500. That's 50%. And for our beloved baseball team, that is a championship season. However, I know you're not satisfied with that. How far can you take your abilities now that you feel comfortable being in corruption? Do you have what it takes to get to the mountaintop? Um, yeah, I mean, if I say I don't, then that's that's just silly. I mean, I've, I've got every opportunity here to do what I got to do. Uh, now it's my job to go ahead, put the work in, get the wins, and we'll see where everything lands at the end of the season. All right, last question for you, James, before we bring in your opponent. You guys have been taking shots on each other on Twitter. You've been going after Paul. You're saying that he, he shouldn't have stayed with the den, that he's going to continue his losing ways. Comes Harsh words. Uh, did you guys get along while you were on the den, or what's, what's the, the animosity towards the powder kick? I mean, the, the only animosity I have is that he wasn't there for me. You know, I, I never got anything out of him. Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, a teammate of his, and I didn't get any uh, study sessions with Paul Preston. I didn't get any uh, words of encouragement before my match with Bibiani. Um, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I got drafted by Burnett, which was terrible, but then I got traded to, uh, to the den. I was stuck there. This guy just decides to stick there. I mean, what's he thinking? You know, the Den's a bunch of losers. He decides he wants to stay there. That's on him. All right. So, James, thank you so much. Good luck to you. See you in a bit. And his opponent representing the Den with a record of three wins, three defeats, and one knockout. This is the Paul Preston, my friend, thank you for joining us here. Uh, look, man, this was this has been a crazy journey for you in the offseason because there's a lot of rumors you and Ben Bateman had talked about 
uh, joining up, whether it was with the den, whether, whether it was with the dungeon, you ultimately go back to stay with the den. And now you have this guy, James White and Corruption, coming after you. Uh, any words to James after hearing what he just said? Yeah, I got one word comes to mind, Christian. Wah, right? I mean, come on, listen. First of all, Mark Ellis, Yankee fan? Okay, I need an apology for that. Also, look at how can you even teach a guy who you look behind him you see all the, the dvds and blu-rays he's got behind him he's got like george carlin get out in glass he's trying to alphabetize him he puts george carlin under g like that's supposed to go under c man and it's things like that you see in a guy and you're like well there's no help in this guy right and and it, it, he's one and one i'm three and three and it's time for me to separate myself from okay, from, so- from the middle line from the mediocrity of a of a 500 record well, and, and that's what you have as well as James. And so it thrills me to no end that you got upset that I called you a Yankee fan. That's my apologies on that one. But I do have to ask you another similar question to what I just asked your opponent. How far can Paul Preston go in the movie trivia schmodown? Can you see yourself with a belt over that protein enhanced shoulder? First of all, and I've said this before, I'm going to wear it around my waist. It's a belt. It's not half a necklace, all right? That's the first thing that's going to happen. And secondly, yeah, of course, I have a whole plan for myself. I'm just going to go through everybody in the Schmodown alphabetically. Start with James White, going down to Z, and then I guess I got to go back to A, and then and from A on back to back to W again. That's going to be I'm going to I'm going to beat everybody. Is the point? I'm going to I'm going to scratch their rear ends. Thank you to Paul Preston. All right, so White and Preston are in the room, Mark. We're about to start round number one. How does it go? Yeah, we're getting confirmation, Christian, that yes, that is a full alphabet. W to Z and then A back to W. That would be 26 letters, so that is accurate. No points for that. What you do get points for are correct movie trivia question answers. You hear eight of them in round number one. Each one is worth one point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. You have 15 seconds to write down your answer. Once you hear the question, we'll ask you by name or nickname to reveal your answer. At that point, please show what you wrote to the camera the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. You each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. You can simply say repeat. We'll re-ask the question. Buys you another 15 seconds to get that correct answer attempt. You also each have one challenge to be utilized at any point throughout the three-round match. We will allow you to say challenge or call your manager in. They will ultimately confirm and ratify that said challenge is occurring, and then we will make our ruling. So, Christian, Paul looks focused, James as well, and you and I, we're just here hanging on for dear life. Well, we ask, Paul, are you ready? Yeah. Did uh, Larry Joe Campbell cramp in a golf course in Hall Pass? Yeah, I'm ready. And, James, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one. Question number one in the realm of directors. The 2020 courtroom drama, The Trial of the Chicago 7, was written and directed by whom? You catch that flick, Christian? Not yet. Not yet. It's on the uh, It's on the to-do. Look, I got to be honest with you. Since you and I stopped doing the dance, uh, I don't watch as much as I used to. Five, Let's dance. four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and we start with Paul. Aaron Sorkin. Yes, James. Aaron Sorkin. Next question, and I like the violence that is happening with the answers. All right, here's the next question. Yeah, kids, do not be like your heroes because they're probably going to break their equipment. Your next question is in the world of romantic comedies, or as I patented, rom-coms. Here it is. Which actress starred in the rom-coms Raising Helen, My Best Friend's Girl, and Something Borrowed? Yeah, you don't miss doing the dance. You don't miss sitting through I didn't say I didn't miss it. Didn't say I didn't miss it. Didn't say just said since we did it, uh, since we don't do it as much, five four three two i don't one pens down hands up pens down hands up please hands up on both please james hands up please and we start with james kate hudson yes and paul kate hudson yep all right just a reminder please guys keeping your hands uh visible throughout the whole thing appreciate it and okay here we go here is the next question question number three animated Tom Holland and Chris Pratt portray brothers in which 2020 Pixar film? I'll tell you what, though, if I do get nostalgic, the way I wax, so I just put on that Dumb and Dumber 2 review. <laughs> right, 
<laughs> I had fun with it. Sorry. Yeah, it was it was really for five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Paul. Onward. Yes. James. Onward. That is correct. All right. All right. Here we go. And now, Mark, next question. Onward with Christian and I's divergent lives as well. Your next category is in the world of black cinema. And the question. Carl Franklin directed Denzel Washington and Don Cheadle in what 1995 American neo-noir mystery thriller? I like those four words. Neo-noir mystery thriller. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with James White. Devil in a blue dress. Yes, Paul. Devil in a blue dress. 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four as we get to our next question here. 1990s. In the year 1990s, dude, we have Tom Cruise plays a race car driver alongside Robert Duvall and Nicole Kidman in which 1990 film? Christian, you want to make $100? Sure. Name the artist who performs the song Devil in a Blue Dress. Oh, I know that one. It's five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, please. And Paul. Days of Thunder. And James. Days of Thunder. There you go. Five, five. Next one. Hundred dollar answer was Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. We go to comedies. Okay. And for a point, which SNL, that's Saturday Night Live actor, stars as the character Scott? In the 2020 comedy, The King of Staten Island. Which was, I believe, Christian's title for a short time in the late 90s. No, never lived in Staten Island. Queens, that's it? That's it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. And all right, so we start with James. Pete Davidson. All right. Uh, that's correct. Yes. And Paul. Pete Davids. Correct. Okay. All right. Here we go. Next question, guys. Next question. And we are at category seven in the realm of mystery. Who plays the character of LB Jeff Jeffries, who is confined to a wheelchair in the 1954 Hitchcock classic Rear Window? You know, Christian, what's not a mystery is that these two fellas, I don't want to do an announcer curse here, on the verge of perfect rounds. Uh, They are. You might have jinxed it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and Paul. James Stewart. Yes. And James White. More familiar with him, Jimmy Stewart. Also correct. And now we get to our final question. As Mark said, both Preston and White have seven points apiece. Seven, seven. If they both get it correct, perfect round, and we continue on the way we have been, here is the question mark. And it's in the category of famous actors and actresses. These are performers of notable acclaim. Here's the question for a point. Which actor starred in the comedies Long Shot and An American Pickle? Yeah, my knee-jerk reaction is always to say Jimmy Stewart, but mm-hmm. James Stewart, he was billed as a bunch. Maybe yeah. all the... I don't know. I wouldn't have lied. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. James for the perfect round. Seth Rogen. Yes. And Paul? Seth Rogen. All right. Keep those whiteboards with you, gentlemen. We got a perfect round, 8-8, eight, eight, so you're both going to write it down same way we have for the previous eight questions. This is a bonus question. If you both get it right, worth one point. Here it is. All right. Who plays characters John and Jane in Mr. and Mrs. Smith? For perfect, perfect rounds here. Nine points apiece. Yep. Hell of a round by both. Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. One. All right, here you go. 
This who plays characters John and Jane in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Not to be confused with Timmy Smith, who still holds the Super Bowl record for most rushing yards in a single game. 204. In five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Paul. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Yes. And James White. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Yeah, James, just make sure when you're answering, just hold it up just a little higher so we can see it. Yes, we, yeah, we, we saw it. So eight, eight. And now it is nine, 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 nine as they both get it right. What a start for both White and Preston as we get into round number two. It's the wheel round. How's it go, Mark? I know that you guys are pumped up. Well, get pumped up even more. I, if you've been watching anything I've been doing, you've hear, you've heard me raving about Stereo. It's a brand new app. I absolutely love it. I've been using it every day. I've been interacting with you guys, and I know a ton of you guys are going to be doing Stereos. Hell, some of you might be doing Stereo right now. What is it? Stereo app, it's got thousands of live social conversations going on at the same time with a wide range for genres for every interest. It's got news, it's got comedy, it's got sports, it's got schmodown, it's got all of that. You choose whether you want to be a co-host of a stream or, uh, or you just participate as a guest and simply listen in on exclusive conversation questions. Uh, it, it's, it's super interactive. You click the share button to help people out. There's a clap button and you start to really listen in on conversations and get to interact with people that you normally won't, wouldn't be able to. It's really great. I love it. I've been addicted to it. Everybody on SEN has been. And it also, it's, it's, a one, it's one thing where people always ask, how do I podcast? I've never podcasted before. I've wanted a podcast. This is so easy. You put earbuds in. You talk to somebody else. You talk to somebody in this community. You talk to somebody, one of your friends. You start your own thing. You hashtag in movies. You set it up. You set up your own stream. You know when to do it. It's incredible. SEN, the after show that we've been doing, uh, it's every day 12 o'clock it's just brett and myself cutting up jokes and just being morons and and it's been a lot of fun taking the questions from you guys and it's, it's starting to catch on and you can get ahead of the curve if you join all you got to do is you go to stereo.com slash christian harloff please head on over there stereo.com sign up follow me follow some of your favorite schmodown personalities go on over there it's really great you can you can interact with me and i'll hear you and i'll be able to place a voice with a name something that we've wanted to do for a very long time and now we can do it it's great it's live social conversation it's amazing uh, once again you can be the co-host or you can just listen into a conversation uh join us you can join us for the shows that we do for sith council i do it every wednesday at 10 a.m for the brett and christian comedy show or just sen personalities you can join us every day monday through friday at 12 o'clock and then there's random days maybe like on a wednesday at like four o'clock i'll do a schmodown show so there's a lot of stuff already happening on that app so go ahead check it out please go and join stereo today i promise you you're getting ahead of the curve stereo.com slash christian harlow no misses yet let's see what the wheel round hath wrought the wheel of fate doom and justice is about to arrive in individual houses that'd be way too expensive it's a virtual wheel you'll spin it with your mind and once you settle on a category you're gonna hear four questions in that realm each question is worth two points the questions are asked to just you however stealing is available in round number two so if you're not sure of the answer you can ask us for multiple choice we'll give you four options one of which is the correct answer at that point the value of the question goes down to one uh tied at the top here christian so both competitors have a 500 record but paul preston he's seen more matches and so paul preston is by the slightest of margins going to have the right to either spin the wheel first or defer to his opponent. Paul, what's the move? I'll spin first. 60 seconds, Kate, to talk to Paul, starting now. Uh-huh. Oh, she's yeah. muted. Uh -huh. Okay, that's oh, good. Oh, she's muted. Thank, thank God oh, you're here. Jeez, thank God I'm here is right. Thank God I know where the mute button is. Remember today when we talked on the phone and I said you're going into the second round with a perfect score, plus you're going to get the bonus? How'd that yeah, work out? I'll tell you a little bit. I was offended at the top when you were talking about the rules. You know, it's going to yeah. be eight questions and then four and then three. No, it's nine. It's oh, nine. It's, be nine, with it's the nine. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. So here's what I like. I like that uh, it was a little shady how close James White came in writing one of his answers. And you, just out of the goodness of your heart, used a JTE. I see that. The, 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 the good man will win at the end of this. So 
I say, you are doing everything perfectly. Everything that we talked about is coming true. You are the man. Today's the day you get vindicated. Let's spin that wheel, baby. And I appreciate you putting on lipstick. Anything for you, Polly. And here is the spin. All right, so now Paul is spinning here, Mark. If he lands on something he doesn't like, he can spin again, unless, of mm -hmm. course, he lands on opponent's choice. We put opponent's choice on the wheel. Oh, no, you didn't. Yes, we did. All right. Oh, it's almost spinner's choice. Ooh, Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt. All right. So you got 60 seconds to decide if you're staying on Emily Blunt. And here we go. There are better things. There are worse things. What's your gut? I'll stick with it. All right. So our competitors are back in. And now, Paul, you're going to get four questions in the realm of Emily Blunt. Here we go. Paul, Emily Blunt co-stars with Joseph Gordon-Levitt in what film from director Ryan Johnson? Looper. Two points. <laughs> Emily Blunt plays the female lead in which movie, which is a reboot of a universal monster property? The Wolfman. Correct. All right, question number three. Question number three. Emily Blunt has a cameo as Miss Piggy's assistant in which film that stars The Muppets? The Muppets. The Muppets is correct. And the final question. Here it is. All right. Emily Blunt's character works for what government agency at the beginning of Sicario before being enlisted to a special ops task force? Five, four, three, two. Let's get multiple. Is it A, the CIA? B, ATF? C, FBI? D, Secret Service? Five, four. I'll repeat the options one more time. You got that one, so please hands up. A, CIA? B, ATF, C, FBI, D, Secret Service. ATF. It's incorrect. James, I'm going to repeat the question and the answers for you. Emily Blunt's character works for what government agency at the beginning of Sicario before being enlisted to a special ops task force? A, CIA, B, ATF, C, FBI, D, Secret Service. FBI. For one point, that is correct for the steal. So James gets the steal there. It's a big steal and essentially cuts first blood as we see ourselves 15-10. Preston still has the lead here as we get to James' in a second round. We're going to drop out Paul and bring in Shannon. Woo-wee! Look who's on fire today. Good to see you, man. You're looking good. You're looking calm and confident. That's what I like to see. Perfect first round. Great steal in round two. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, that's just what corruption does to you. I'm feeling great. I mean, what Muppet movie? Come on now. Let's go. <laughs> Let's keep that fire. Let's keep that fire burning, all right? Come on. And here is the spin. Same thing I said about Paul. James is going to spin. If he doesn't get something he likes in the first round, he can spin it. First spin, he can spin again. Unless it lands on opponent's choice. Here it is. Or if it lands on Emily Blunt, or spin Emily again. Blunt again. <laughs> I mean, I'll take more Emily Blunt questions. <laughs> Could be 70s. 70s. It is 70s. All right, 60 seconds to decide starting now. Okay, pretty broad. Um, yeah, I feel good about 70s, but um, yeah, it's just a really broad category. You never know what you're going to get there. Um, mm -hmm. And we also got to watch out for your opponent, who um, I yeah. think is pretty, pretty well versed in this. Uh, I mean, you risk, you know what I mean? You don't want to test your luck too much, but I know there's some things on here yeah. that you want better. Uh, what does your gut say? Yeah, I mean, he he was in college in the 70s, so he's probably really good on there. So <laughs> let's let's spin it again, see if we can get something a little bit better. I agree. Worst case scenario, that gets thrown right back at you, and you'll be That's all right. Fine. Yeah. All right, here it is. Here's the spin. Christian, I'm looking at the first certificate of Paul Preston. It, it's highly unlikely he was in college in the 70s. Uh, no, but Roka was. 
Christian George. I'm sorry. And there we go. And there so we go. Okay. All right. So Paul is back in. And now we have James White answering four questions in the realm of the 1970s. All right, James. Paul Preston was cooking to that Emily Blunt category, and then you were able to steal a point off of him. And now it's your turn in round number two in the world of the 1970s. Here's question number one for two points. After serving as a naval officer, Robert Redford's Hubble returns to what Hollywood profession, which allows them an affluent lifestyle in the way we were? Multiple choice. All uh, right, for one point, your four options. Is it A, a director? B, a writer, C, an actor, or D, a producer? D, producer. That is incorrect for a one-point steal. Paul, I'm going to give you the options and the multiple choice options. Once again, here it is. After serving as a naval officer, Robert Redford's Hubble returns to what Hollywood profession, which allows them an affluent lifestyle in the way we were? Got it. In the multiple. multiple. Is it A, a director, B, a writer, C, an actor, or D, a producer? A B, a writer. The man might have been in college in the 70s, Christian. That is correct for a big one-point steal. Steals back that point that he lost. And now here is the second question for James. And that is, for two points, who plays Frederick Frankenstein in 1974's Young Frankenstein? Gene Wilder. It's actually pronounced Frankenstein, and you are correct because it is also pronounced Gene Wilder for two points. All right, here's question number three. And your penultimate question in the world of the 1970s. Rudy Ray Moore stars as a pimp who takes on his enemies in what 1975 black exploitation movie? Dolomite. Is his name? That is correct. The name of the movie is actually just Dolomite, so you are right for two points. Movie that based on it was Dolomite is my name. So we move to James's last question here in round number two, Christian. It's getting close. It's getting competitive for two points. What 1978 movie stars Richard Gere as a farm worker involved in a romantic triangle during the 1910s? Five, four, three. Multiple choice. All right, for one point. Is it A, Days of Heaven, B, Badlands, C, Bound for Glory, or D, Gates of Heaven? Badlands. That is incorrect so for another one point steal paul preston question and options what 1978 movie stars richard Gere as a farm worker involved in a romantic triangle during the 1910s is it a days of heaven b badlands c bound for glory or d gates of heaven a a is correct. It was Days of Heaven, and you talk about a giant steal. Paul Preston getting the steal that White had stolen from him, and another steal on top of it. Close out round two, Christian. Big, for, amazing match from both competitors here, but yeah, this one was the one where Paul was a little steal just a little bit. All right, and now we have reached round number three. Mark, it is the final round. How does it go? I believe that's a rhetorical question. You know how it works, Christian. Yeah. But for the competitors and the fans, round number three, we need a series of numbers from each competitor. Your numbers may range from 1 to 20. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent because each number corresponds to a unique category of movie, trivia, schmodown, goodness. We need three integers from each of you. First question's worth two points. Next one's worth three points. Your last question, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. Paul Preston. You enjoy a three-point lead, so you have the honor of giving us your three numerals first. From one to 20, what feels fortunate? We'll go with three. <clears throat> and seven and 12. Three, seven, and 12 for Paul and for James White. I'm going to go four, two, and eight. 
or two and eight for James White. All right, Kate, you got 60 seconds to talk to Paul starting now. <laughs> How does this feel? That's pretty good. You know, <laughs> it's good, the, doesn't it? It's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is what winning feels like. Well, and I couldn't be happier for you. You everything you did was perfect. You went to multiple when you needed to because the truth is, and we talked about this with Rachel the other day, the truth is you cut down what he could steal from you. So you, my friend, are right where we need you to be. You are in the zone. Those numbers you picked sound really good. Three points. Virtual high, virtual high. Can we even? So you just keep doing what you're doing. You just stay in the zone and just know that I feel calm. And I know you weren't in the in college in the 70s. <laughs> that joke fell flat when you went up by three points. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, Shannon, 60 seconds starting now. Blah 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 blah. I don't know when being up by three points means that you won, but if that's the delusion they're running with, you know what, James, we'll let him have it. You stay focused. I can tell you're fine. You're not broken. You're not shaken by it. It's a measly three points. We can make it up here. Talk to me, buddy. No, I'm feeling fine. Um, yeah, obviously I knew all of his Emily Blunt questions. You know, 70s is a bit broad. <laughs> get a couple of movies, you all know it happens. Exactly. And that's that's the case when you get these specific genres versus these deck. I mean, it's, it's bound to happen. So you did your best with them. Uh, you Again, you dropped multiple choice when you needed to. You played it smart. Uh, shake it off. Don't feel bad about it. Don't let that sit with you now because we got round three to go. We can still win this. Absolutely. You were very much still in this game. So don't give up on yourself. Okay? Clear that head. Slow that heart rate. Get ready to answer some more questions. You're really good at this. You should just answer them. Yeah, I think so. I've done pretty so. good in round three before. So. Yeah. You All got right. this, baby. All right. So, James, are you ready? Yep. Okay, so here we go in the category of Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise was what James White chose with category four, and here we go. Okay, in what film does Tom Cruise star as Colonel Klaus Schrank Graf von Stauffenberg, the German army, army colonel who was instrumental in the conspiracy to assassinate Adolf Hitler? Valkyrie. Yes, for two points. All right, for two points. And now we see ourselves 17, 16. James needs to hit his three pointer in order to bounce it back to Paul Preston. And you chose category two, category two. And that is in the realm of sports films, sports. Mike Ditka plays himself helping Will Ferrell's character in which soccer film? Kicking and screaming for three more points. All right, so now we see ourselves 1917. Paul Preston has an opportunity to tie it up here. He can tie it up, uh, and all he needs to do is hit his two-pointer, which is Category 3, Mark. That's right. Didn't think we'd hear Mike Ditka's name today. Um, Paul, yes, you did say number three. I just said it, possibly leading you in that direction. Regardless, we're here, and your two-pointer is in the category of thrillers. And here it is. Nick Nolte and Jessica Lange co-star in what thriller from director Martin Scorsese? Cape Fear. It's a great amusement park ride movie, and that is correct for two points. All right, so we're going to stick with Paul Preston here, who's going to try to get his three-pointer in order to force James White to hit his five mark, and he chose category number seven. Yes, he did. And that corresponds to a young man who, like the great actors Orson Welles, the Mike Ditkas of the world, is rapidly climbing the ranks. His name is Leonardo DiCaprio. And for three points and a three-point lead, the query is. For what film did Leonardo receive his first acting Oscar nomination? What's eating Gilbert Grape? Still don't know the answer to that, but I do know that your answer is correct, and it's a three-point lead for the powder keg as we kick it back to the jet for his five-point question, Christian. All right, so here's where we stand. James White needs to hit his five. If he hits his five-pointer, he bounces it back to Paul and forces Paul to try to win it. However, if he misses, then Paul Preston will win the game for the den. All right, James, you chose category eight. Category eight. That is in the realm of musicals. Musicals. All right, here you go. Okay. What 1954 musical 
is set in the Pacific Northwest state of Oregon and stars Howard Keel and Jane Powell. Five, four, three, first two, eight. first one. What 1954 musical is set in the Pacific Northwest state of Oregon and stars Howard Keel and Jane Powell? Five, four, three, two, repeat. Second one. What 1954 musical is set in the Pacific Northwest state of Oregon and stars Howard Keel and Jane Powell? Yes. Five, four, three, two, repeat. Last one. What 1954 musical is set in the Pacific Northwest state of Oregon and stars Howard Keel and Jane Powell? Five, four, three, two. Showboat. And you Ladies and gentlemen, the powder cake, Paul Preston. The answer was seven brides for seven brothers, and I think Paul had it there. We see ourselves Woo. with a victory for the Dan, a big victory, <laughs> tough match. The jet goes down swinging, Woo. but man, it was a match. All right. Mm -hmm. Paul mm -hmm. and Kate are here. We're going to throw you guys back to Kate. You'll be very happy to hear this. Steph Sabra in just a moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what those noises emanating from Kate's body were, but I think a lot of fans watching were making similar sounds watching the end of this match because that was a barn burner, Christian. Paul Preston, a worthy winner here today, and James the Jet White just getting saddled with some really tough categories. 1970s in round two, a musicals question from back in the day in round number three. Very, very tough break in fortune for La Jet. It was tough. I mean, he he, the fact that he got that question for his last one and it was i have to tell you and i've I, mark i've been saying it so many times the question writers have really been upping their game and it's like because that's one as i'm thinking about it and i'm going through my 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 theater background from florida state going through it and hearing those questions i'm like oh wait which 19 oh Oh, and I got there, but I had is because of the context clues of what, uh, you know, PJ and his great team has put together. I thought it was a great, great job overall. Very well written match. And um, and look, Paul Preston does it. And the den gets two more points. Big Each year. Bride for got a brother, but unfortunately, only one today can win the match. And that was Paul, the powder keg Preston. And like Christian foreshadowed much to kate mulligan's delight they are now going to be interviewed by the one the only steph sabra steph it's all yours thanks mark and christian wow what an unbelievable win kate wow. <laughs> kate kate paul was your number one pick mm -hmm. how are you feeling mm -hmm. like you chose correctly Oh, I chose correctly last year too. It just didn't it didn't break our way. Um boy, glasses glare is annoying, huh, Paul? I'm living your world these days. <laughs> it's a pandemic, you know. I'm looking at a screen yeah. so much. I'm, I'm glasses guy now. I look like I look like Christian more than I normally do. Oh no. Um yeah, no, I never made a bad choice about Paul Preston. The uh the the truth is that this we just got to really see him shine finally. And this is what's been there all along. Yeah, Paul, this is your first win since 2019. I'm sure this okay. feels good. Did you have a, a better, a different attitude going into this match in this season? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that new attitude came with Kate's new attitude. She brought up, you know, she she shored things up. She looked at a situation and said, what am I going to be, some kind of chump in the next year again? What am I going to be next year's? Am I going to be this year's John Kaiser and sit in the basement? <laughs> she didn't want that. So she you know, figured it out, worked out what she had to do, and then spread that uh, that idea of work 
and uh, and you know, caring for each other and, and you know studying and all that stuff where it, it needed to fall on me because I've been riding on what I know for too long and now I needed to get in there and dig and and study and people are do around me are doing it I couldn't ignore it anymore and yeah, it pays off yeah you're well, definitely I want to say one more thing Florida yeah. State has a theater department <laughs> Because we're finding out something every day. And we're also finding out that you are indeed the competitor people have been talking about. You are here to win. Who are, is there anybody that you're looking to take up next? Listen, what's after W? Anybody got a, uh, got a, <laughs> no, I can't think of any X, Y, Z's. No. All right. So we're going to go back to A. Well, it looks like, hey, we're, we landed on B. How about Ben Bateman? <laughs> ben <laughs> four, right? And then, uh, and didn't win at that tournament. I oh. ended that year on a horrible note. I should have partnered with him, Bateman. Should have partnered with him. <laughs> Kate, what's your attitude moving forward with Paul? Well, my attitude, first of all, Paul needs nothing from me. And uh, and the truth is, the the I actually owe him now because he gave me the feeling of defeat over Shannon, <laughs> which it came true. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of hype going into this. Does that make you nervous at all? Or do you kind of feed off that fire, Kate? Oh, I just feed off it. You know, Sharon Barney Fife is a really good manager. Um, but I I just, I feel like she was a really good manager last year. And then um, she's not very good at drafting. You know what I mean? Um, she's not very good at like prioritizing who she should keep and who she should trade and sort of thing. So I'm just happy that I got to be on the receiving end and I got to sort of puppeteer her mind to make her think that she, that I was uh, I was helping her out. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a thought about that too. I mean, listen, yeah. we're over here in the den trying to figure things out. Corruption wins last year. You can't take that away from them, right? And then she's got to go and dictate how the draft works and say, don't take this person, don't take that person, do as I say, right? That, that's yeah. not seemly, okay? And it doesn't sit on you. A lot of things sit on Shannon very nicely, you know, but uh, not that. That's just, no. uh, that's bad play. And I'm glad to come in here and show corruption that you shouldn't do that. And uh, and this is what will happen to you when you do. Mm -hmm. And Kate, you had traded, you had tra had given two picks to Shannon. Um, how is that faring? How is that faring out for you now? Yes, yeah, Shannon gave me two picks. Exactly, Steph. Yes, Shannon gave me two picks for me to with uh, to retain Marisol for her. And yes, I, yes. Um, you know, I guess we'll see how that turns out when we see how Marisol does for her. Well, I guess we'll see. And I hopefully we'll see a match between you and Ben Bateman. Christian and Mark, back to you. All right. So, yeah, obviously Kate is doing a little bit of a dance. And I think, look, this is where Shannon knows that she is in that position. She won the championship last year. So anytime anyone beats her, they're going to be doing a song and a dance, you know. And I think that it probably also feels a little bit good for Kate because Kate traded for James. James has been doing nothing but bashing her on every single show he's go gone on, and whether it's social media, whether it's the beginning of this show, has taken shots. And so Kate is dancing and smiling. She's having a good season thus far shannon is in the same position she was in last year she wins a, a few she loses a few but we know how last year turned out and we know that when you have the wrath of the queen it's not a good thing no it's not christian and, and you make a great point legendary coaches know the downside to being etched into mythology with championships is that you get everybody's best shot ask bill belichick ask greg popovich or ask shannon barney yeah and um, of course, you know, Kate talking about Marisol McKee and after Marisol won her first match against uh, uh, Vinnie Mancuso in the beginning of the month. The question is, will Marisol deliver? Will Marisol continue to deliver? Because right now that trade that they made, it, it, it's it's still up in the air and who won. But anyway, we're going to be talking to Steph Sabra, who is with Shannon Barney and James White. Thanks, Christian, James, Shannon. That was a hard-fought match, but it was a really good match. Shannon, the smack talking continues from the den. How are you feeling? Look, I want to first say thank you so much, Kate Mulligan. They do say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And with your red shirt and your red lips and all the trash you're talking, it's really, really appreciated that you like me that much. I, I, I feel honored. I feel um, I feel beautiful. I feel unstoppable because of you, because all you do is come in here and try to be like me. And it's sad that you'll never reach that level, but for God's sake, honey, keep trying. I really, really am enjoying it. Did I, like, did I get single white female? Is that what's happening now? 
Is Kate trying to become me? Because that's what it looks like. James, and people were saying you were the steal this season and you performed really great, but I, did that play into your head? Was there a lot of pressure riding on your shoulders coming into this match? The pressure was on Paul and Kate's shoulders. I mean, he was a retained player and I was a pick late in the draft. So he was supposed to win this game. He was supposed to win this game by a lot. And it came down to one question, a 1950s musical question. And I picked the wrong Howard Keel movie. Same one came out just a couple years earlier than that. I mixed them up in my head. But you never know what's going to happen in these five-point questions. If I hit that, he's not hitting his five. I mean, come on. Paul Preston doesn't perform well in round three. We know this. He got two gimme questions there at the end that anybody in their right mind would be able to get. Um, so, no, the pressure was all on him. I played as good as I could trying to navigate through that second round where he was given the answers to four questions and Emily Blunt. I mean, come on. You could just have that written on the bathroom wall. Everybody knows those. I got to say, I love your attitude, and it does seem like you fit in cor to corruption perfectly. But now moving forward, what are you what are you taking away from this match? What have you learned? Um, I learned that I need to watch 1950s musicals, apparently, um, because that's where um, this game really turned. Um, no, I, I've got the best faction in the world. I mean, the queen there on my side, there's no place to go but up here. I will get anybody that stands in my way, beware, because corruption is coming for you. Look where we were last year, and then look where we finished. And if you think you guys have any chance against us, just think again. And Shannon, Free For All is coming up next month. Will we see James there? Any choices on who you're going to have? I'm not telling y'all anything. You don't deserve to know what's working in my brain right now. Get out of here with that dumb question. I'm not telling you. Shh. That's fair. The queen will be cooking up for us. But until then, back to you. Woo. Nice move by Steph trying to get some early answers by the queen. And it, it didn't happen. But you got to give Steph Sabra some uh, some points there for trying. The free for all is coming up and it is less than a month away. We got stalled last year. We had a horror free for all. But next month, the free for all, it is back. That's right. 40 competitors in the free for all. That's right, five competitors from each faction, and the winner gets a title shot, three points for the faction for the winner, and a one point for the MVP. We didn't get to do it last year. We're going to do it. Who will be in there? Which competitors? Who will win it? Who will take it? What's going to happen? It'll all go down. It is going to be one of the big pay-per-views for April. There's three big pay-per-views in April, and how do you guys get it? Well, you join the Patreon, patreon.com slash schmodown. $10 tier and up. You get that thing for ten dollars here. You get all the pay per views we do. You get the the commentaries, the Q and As we do, the exhibitions. It is the best bang for your buck. But hey, you just want to watch the free for all, and that's it. You can get it at the schmodownlive.com. But Mark, we got another pay per view, and that happens tonight. Listen Ooh, to this. this. So excited! You want to tell me? You want me to? No, you you can do it. Go ahead. You can go ahead. That's fine. Uh, tonight, we are going to see the outlaw, John Roca. He returns to the Schmodown. This is yet another season, his seventh season in the movie trivia Schmodown, and he goes up against Liz Shannon Miller, lightning Liz Shannon Miller. What a season for her, and what a season for the usual suspects so far. Can they continue it with lightning Liz potentially getting a victory over the outlaw? We'll see. And in the main event, Partners collide. Ben, the boss, Bateman, faces Yodi, Mark Riley, the former two-time champion against the former champion, once brothers, now bitter enemies, and they face each other tonight. It's the dungeon versus the den once again. Kate Mulligan returns tonight in the pay-per-view, so please go and check that out. Once again, $10 patrons, you get it. You want to just let uh, Mulligan and Kaiser host that? I mean, they're managing. Why don't we just let them do it? We, we can take the night off. Be the end of the show, my friend. We would never air ever again. Probably an accurate statement. Well, it's the end of this show, but not before we remind you that Paul the Powder Keg Preston, who's a fan of the Angels of Los Angeles, of Anaheim, of Orange County, gets the W narrowly over James White. The Jet, he's in corruption, and he's a Baltimore Orioles fan like myself. Christian, hell of a match today. A lot of knowledge, some bad categories for James, and some timely steals for the Powder Keg. Yeah, it was a big. It was funny because, like you said, he he had lost that point 
in the second round. You're like, uh-oh, that could be the game changer. And it turned out he stole two. It was a great performance by Paul Preston. And it was a great performance by James White. They both played their hearts out. It was a great scrap. We've had great fights all the way through this month and it keeps on going and next month you want to check out all the schedule to see who's playing who the schmodownlive.com and also don't forget the first class league that's going on every tuesday on twitch two matches every tuesday it is the developmental league on twitch you're going to find all the schmodown stars of tomorrow at the first class league brad gilmore and team doing a great job over there so for mark ellis i'm christian harloff and we'll see you tonight you know, Gene, you know what? Okay. All right. You know what? All right. I'll meet you there. Okay. I, well, no, get, you better get here wait. now. 42 minutes and ticking. I am. I'll put Ludacris speed on the Tesla. I'll get there. Do it. All right. See you, sir. See you soon, Gene. The meeting was Thursday. I know for a fact the meeting was Thursday with this guy. I, look, I know what it is. I know what his problem is. Look, I didn't know it's, it was his sister. I didn't know. How am I supposed to know that it's Jean's sister? Nobody would know that. She was dancing in the club, and next thing you know, boom, 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 whatever. I didn't know that. I got a dinner with Khan later. I got to talk to Barbarian. I got to talk to the Goat Law. I got scrimmages. I got matches coming up. Come on, you jack off. How did I know the, the, the salamanders were illegal? I didn't know that. That's what I was telling the judge. I'm like, look, I, I'm just trying to make some money here. Where's this guy? Gene. Where's Gene? It's a big place, but I can't see him. Just look for the biggest moron. Gene! Where is this idiot? Have you seen Gene? Have you seen Gene? No? Okay. This guy's cutting into Gucci time, and I don't like it. Gene! What is this? What is this, some kind of joke? I'm not 100% sure what's happening here, but I don't like it. Let's see what kind of nonsense this is. Ooh, nice card. Put this on. It suits you better than your mask. Love the dungeon. Let's see what we have here. What the is this? A clown outfit. Bateman. Merle. Kaiser. All right. I've been bamboozled. I've been hoodwinked. I've been hopscotched. I got got. I guess this really does mean war. Well, three could play at that game. Kid for my win. I need my hands. This life is real. If they pretend, they must have been. I get it in. I get it in.